What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's your girl Colors and I'm back with another video. And today's video is gonna be all about my postpartum care experience plus my update. Now in this video, I'm gonna be basically covering my whole entire experience dealing with postpartum care, what it was like, um, what are some of the things that you actually need and what are some of the things that the hospital actually send you home with and maybe just a little bit of what you can just expect overall. Now I understand that my experience wasn't that severe as some people I have heard. So just take my information with a grain of salt. So if you are interested in hearing everything that surrounds my postpartum care, just keep on watching. So the best way I think it is to navigate this video is to start off basically explaining how my labor and delivery process was in a nutshell so you can understand my postpartum care. Now, if you have not seen my labor and delivery video, my labor process was very intense and very bad. But actually, when it comes to the delivery aspect of having baby girl Nala, it was very easy. I only pushed for 30 minutes, and I know how everyone says they feel the ring of fire, and it hurts, and it feels like you're pooping. But in my personal experience, I did not feel the ring of fire at all in the slightest, and I never even got the urge to poop. I guess I just started pushing on my own when I thought it was time so when I started pushing what the nurse did was she put her finger up there and was like push in this direction and I did that I held my breath that was the worst part of my labor and delivery but imagine just going underwater holding your breath and pushing or taking I guess a dunk in that sense <laughs> I just said that. But I guess in a sense like holding a bathroom where you're just like having a tough one and you're pushing out holding your breath. I guess it's similar to that but the urging feeling of needing to get it out, I never had that feeling. But I did that, like I said, I pushed for 30 minutes. I think I could have gotten her out a lot earlier if I didn't have trouble holding my breath. When I got her out, um, of course I delivered my placenta. By the way, I actually still do have my placenta. <laughs> it, I do plan on eating it. Uh, I don't know when. I, don't, I was planning on originally encapsulating it but I think it's so far fetched now. I don't know which one's better to do, so I just have to do my research and see if it's better to just cook it or still encapsulate it. I don't know which one I'm gonna do, but I still do have it. Or maybe I'll just have a video where I'm just showing it. I don't know, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But I delivered the placenta, which was really tough. But uh, I think everything pretty much went smoothly. I only got two stitches, and I basically had like, um, I don't know if I'm using the right word, but an abrasion. So I just basically bruised that area more than I actually ripped it. So after having baby girl Nala, I was taken to the recovery room and they put basically a chuck under me and told me that I had to use the bathroom for them to basically leave me alone. When I went to the bathroom for the first time, that experience was not that bad. It was really sore down there, but I really expected it to be a lot worse. I remember the nurse just standing there next to the toilet while I'm peeing and I'm like, <laughs> I'm like hovering over the toilet and I just remember looking down and seeing pool of blood all over the um, floor and on the toilet seat and I just remember feeling weird because she was just standing there. Now, I wasn't feeling weird because she was staring at me. I was feeling weird that I knew I had blood everywhere and she was standing there. So I actually had a moment where I'm like, do I wipe it? Do I pretend like she don't see that I see that she sees that I have blood there? I didn't know what to do, so I just said sorry, and she was like, don't worry about it. Um, I'll clean it up, and I was just like, cool. She ended up handing me this gigantic pad. Now, I do not have the pad, but I do have the mesh penny she wanted me to put this gigantic pad in, and I thought it was pretty disrespectful. So I did show this mesh panties. I don't remember what it was, but a recent video I posted, and this is the mesh panties that they give you. 
Now, everyone was raving about these mesh panties and I'm a little, I feel a little bit disrespected because first of all, this looks like a top, but look at the thinness of these panties. So they give you these gigantic pads to put in this. So, of course, this is the leg. Hold on, matter of fact, I'm gonna put this on. Of course, I'm putting it on over my pants. Okay, so this is pretty much what it looks like when you have them on. So they got this gigantic heavy pad and these thin, gigantic panties. When they say this mesh, it's definitely mesh. When she handed this to me, of course I did put it on and I did put the pad on because I actually left my diapers home that I was planning on wearing. So I had to wear this and the pad kept shifting in these panties all night. So I would honestly suggest to wear an adult diaper. I believe these are the discreet ones and this is what I wore the whole time. So it looks like a gigantic pad that's just like attached to the drawers. And as soon as I had a chance, I sent David out and told him to grab my diapers and I wore this pretty much up until I wasn't bleeding no more. But yeah, so she handed me the thing as well as she handed me these, this container of um, witch hazel pre moistened pad. These are the pads and I guess they expect you to like wipe yourself. I don't really know what they expect you to do with this. I know they said leave them in the inside the pad. So you're supposed to like put this underneath your vagina and just kind of set like two of them under there to kind of heal it I guess. I don't know. And then they told me to take a bottle of water which is the Perry bottle and some people say even put witch hazel inside of this. Now I don't know if I mentioned this but they gave me this and the Perry bottle and the mesh panties as well as um, this Dermoplast pain relieving spray. I guess it's for like itching and burning and stuff like that. So every time I went to the bathroom they told me to fill this up with warm water and spray this down there as I'm going to go pee to relieve the pain, I guess. But honestly, uh, I did this maybe about two or three times with the Perry bottle. Clearly, I wasn't really using it because it still has water in it. I done away with it because honestly, I thought it was more of a hassle to use than a help. Now, I was in pain as far as stinging and stuff like that, but it wasn't that deep for me to continue to use this. Now this, I only used one. I, I don't know. Maybe I just was trying to make my life difficult. The only thing that I felt like I needed, like ibuprofen, Tylenol, Midol, anything you can use in that area for pain relieving medications, that's what I wanted. So when I was in the hospital, they were giving me like medical grade reliever but right before I left, they just gave me a bunch of Tylenols and Midols and told me to use that to basically relieve myself of pain. So that being said, I do think if you're in my shoes that the only thing you really need is medication and maybe even the Perry bottle um, just to make sure that you're feeling cleansed because in the beginning you're not at least for a couple days, uh, probably not taking a shower or something like that. Just depends on your situation. You might not be juggling well enough to take a shower. Who knows? You do you. But for me, I don't think I took a shower until a day or two later. So obviously you're going to the bathroom multiple times at that point. So you want the Perry bottle to make sure you are cleansing yourself down there possibly even the witch hazel putting it in the peri bottle the adult diapers for sure but adjust accordingly so now that i have explained my personal experience i kind of wanted to get into my experience once i actually got home and had to deal with certain things like six weeks checkup dealing with my day-to-day -day sex just all that kind of stuff so let's just jump into a little bit of that. So coming home from the hospital, I was still sore, very sore. So I would say that is my biggest experience with postpartum was that it was just sore. My, I had a sore vagina all the time. 
So it was like my vagina area from the front to the crack of my butt. I had a big problem with sitting down and getting up, but once I was up or down, I was pretty much fine. But I had a lot of problems with sitting down too hard because sometimes I was forgetting that I was actually in pain because I did very well recovering that sometimes I forget that I was still physically adjusting. The feeling was kind of like, it's gonna sound so funny when I say this, but if you ever been in a situation where you just had maybe too much sex or a little bit of dry sex and then you get that like soreness on the next day you gotta go pee and your vagina swollen that type of thing like it kind of gave me like that times three just just try your best to follow me <laughs> i did bleed a lot my bleeding didn't calm down until maybe about two weeks after coming home and then maybe about another week and a half I spotted for a while, which was really annoying because there was a lot of days where I thought that my period was coming off or my postpartum bleeding would stop and it would just never do. There was like times towards the end where I would not see no blood and then a day or two later I would see spotting. So it would just be like, uh. So overall my bleeding lasted for about a month almost. Oh, before I forget, one thing that I do want to mention is a pro tip for postpartum care, setting that stuff up. I would suggest getting like a shoe rack. That's what I personally did. I have one of those bathrooms that the toilet is just by itself in the area. And I'm not the type of person that's gonna be going in and out of that toilet area once I'm in it. So I thought it was a good idea to buy an actual like shoe rack that hangs on the door, like a door shoe rack. And I just stuffed all my postpartum care, nursing pads, the witch hazel, the diapers. I just like took them all out their packages and put them in, in the little slit. So every time I would actually use the bathroom, I could just lean up and pull out like the diapers or anything that I needed for my postpartum care. So if you wanted to actually save space instead of having like a little table, I would suggest doing that. One thing that I did want to talk about is that I'm very surprised that I did not have postpartum depression. Now, even though I personally did not suffer from postpartum depression, I can 100% see how you can suffer from postpartum depression because I seen signs in myself coming with it and it mainly came to me when I was having a hard time juggling mainly with breastfeeding and the nighttime feedings and getting tired and all that in the first week that was a huge huge struggle for me and i remember waking up david and being like i am overwhelmed i am seriously overwhelmed breastfeeding is painful more painful than I could have imagined and that was tough battling that getting bruises and then not getting no sleep even just simple stuff that you don't even think about like washing bottles getting up all the way out of bed going in, in the kitchen making sure like their bottles are up the temperature there's a lot of stuff that goes into it and I feel a hundred percent blessed that I have a husband and a partner that has helped me carry some of the load but I can see how <clears throat> women who don't have their partners who are single mothers I I applaud you like I just want to take a moment out like I know this video is about my personal experience but I have a newfound respect for single mothers because I do not know Girl, is it emotional? <sighs> I have known a lot of women who were single mothers and knowing what I know now as a mom, I just feel so blessed because I, I would not know how to do it. I feel like women, especially single mothers, but all mothers in general, but single parents deserve an award because being a mother and, and a father is tough but when you have such a love for a person you sacrifice everything for that person and coming home and learning to find a balance and not realizing what it takes to actually 
physically be there and be a parent to a newborn baby who is helpless is a lot. So I 100% applaud single parents, whether it's mothers, fathers, or whatever, like that is tough because um, after you leave the hospital and all those people who were coming to the hospital and visit you, you will not see all of those people. I guarantee it. I just want to say that just to let you guys know that I see how people can get it because I was on my way with it. But when I seen that I was having a hard time juggling everything, I just started to stop breastfeeding in the middle of the night and started to bottle feed and have my husband take over that load so that I can be able to gain my own sanity and just breastfeed throughout the day. So if you have to make adjustments to your plan on what you see yourself doing as far as how you wanna take care of your baby, my biggest advice to expectant mothers would be just don't take things too serious. As long as your baby is eating, breathing and you are showing that child love no matter how you are feeding them and taking care of them it doesn't matter as long as they're happy it's all that matters just don't take things too serious but now that we got all the emotions out of the way that kind of came out of nowhere didn't think that i'll be shedding any tears or anything like that but let's go ahead and get to some of the juicy parts so let's talk Six. Did I wait the recommended six weeks before having sex? And the answer to that question is technically yes. Actually during the fifth week, uh, we attempted to try to have sex and it was a little bit too much for her to handle and I was just like, uh, no, let's just wait and to see what the doctor says because it was painful. So when I went to my six week appointment, the doctor still seen that I had one little stitch still down there. So she decided to just take it out. It was pretty much hanging out anyway. Might have messed it up when we was trying to have sex or whatnot. But she pretty much said everything looked like the green light down there. So we got approved to have sex. But I still decided after that to wait another week or so to start to have sex again. Um, when we finally started to have sex, I was actually pretty shook on how different I personally felt about my vagina. It was different. It was, I almost felt like I was tighter. I went a long time without sex before and I don't think it ever felt like that because in the beginning of our relationship, we was actually two years celibate. I don't even think I felt that tight when we first, uh, Sorry, TMI, if y'all know my channel, hi, I'm Colors, and I'm a little bit out there. But now, it, it, it's, 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 it has just now got to the point to where I am comfortable at the three month mark without having the pain. So a lot of times when we finally did start having sex, um, the area where my stitches were was always the sore spot when it came to uh, having sex. So I would try to not have him hit that area as much as possible. But then I had to basically allow him to do whatever to basically get used to it. So it's almost like the concept of losing your virginity again when it comes to accepting physical changes down there and pain that you may not want to accept. Now I can only imagine if my situation was a lot worse that it would be an even bigger deal. But in my case, at three months still not even being bad, I finally got comfortable with having sex again. Oh, I do want to talk about this. Uh, I don't know, it just kind of popped in my head. But especially dealing with breastfeeding, I am pretty surprised how actual painful it is to have your boobs touched when it comes to intimacy. Even when it comes to taking showers, it hurts 
when the raindrops would touch it. So I would actually have to tap soap on it in the beginning. Even now because I am in a situation where I'm trying to teach my baby how to relatch. So even now I try to miss the little water streams on my nipples because it's actually pretty painful. Yeah, that is a thing if you don't know now you know um that might be a thing if you are a person who likes your boobies touched in that area you might be taking a while to allow them to be touched when you start to be intimate so yeah <laughs> so overall basically your girl is doing good at the three month postpartum mark uh i finally did get a period um uh, maybe two months i had my uh, first period and it lasted maybe about five days. I haven't had a period since. If everything goes all right, your girl should be getting a period very soon. So keep you updated on that. Wouldn't that be a mess if your girl ended up pregnant again? I don't even want to talk about it. Yeah, I think that is gonna be all for my postpartum update video. I hope that this was helpful. This is just pretty much what's been going on with me on a physical level. So yeah, I think that is just gonna be it. Um, if you haven't already, just make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I would definitely see you guys in the next one. Oh,